What's up guys, it's Carson back here on Toxic Gaming today with our week two of the PGL, the Pokemon Global League, against Sketchy Smeargle, coach of the Seattle Smeargles. And as you see on your screen here, this is actually not a live battle like last time. We got the footage, finished the battle, so there is an outcome to this one that you guys can actually see the full outcome. <laughs> but anyway, as you see on our squad, we have Infernape, Tapu Lele, Kofagrius, Thunderous Eye, Komala, and Excadrill, while he has Garchomp, Nidoking, King, Klefki, Reuniclus, Gramble, and Tentacruel. Now, as we go through it, the Infernape on our team was an Expert Belt, Iron Fist Infernape, with U-Turn, Mach Punch, Earthquake, and Flare Blitz. Basically, as I was looking at his other, his other members of his roster and stuff, he didn't really have a big fighting weakness, but I still wanted to have that Mach Punch for late game shenanigans and things like that. And Infernape is actually outspeeded or sped a little bit, I believe, to be able to outspeed um, a non-scarf, uh, what is it, non-scarf Garchomp, I believe is the, how, the way I have the speed of 196 uh, and Jolly Nature speed, max attack, and then 60 in HP. Then we have our Tapu Lele, which is our Scarf Tapu Lele again, with Psychic, Moonblast, Shadow Ball, and him Power Fire, because he also had a Tapu Bulu and Magnazone that didn't show up, and I was really scared of both of those because of but both of those inside what Trick Room could be for um, Reuniclus. I figured that was going to be a, a big thing that would happen, so I put the Hidden Power Fire on there kind of for both of them. But we have a Max Special Attack, 184 and Timid in speed, which hits us to 151, which we allow then to outpace Timid, Max Speed, Scarf, Nidoking by one point. That way he can't revenge kill us with a Sludge, with a sludge Wave outside of Trick Room we can kill it with the sidekick and we have 12 in special defense just to try to take a little bit of less from the shadow balls and things like things like that and other sludge waves that just randomly might pop up and then 60 in hp um next we have mr mcfeely i didn't say the nicknames for the other two but we have mr mcfeely our cafagrius with lumberry with a nasty plot shadow ball will-o-wisp and pain split max hp 220 in defense and relaxed nature and 36 in special attack with a minus speed nature and zero evs in speed and zero evs in attack Basically, this Cofagrius was, I want to be able to come in and force something out and then set up a nasty plot. And if he decided to go for the Trick Room shenanigans in that, I believe I actually speed tie with minimum speed of Leuniclus. So we could, he would fire a Shadow Ball to me if that is non-stab. Meanwhile, I'm firing stab Shadow Balls at him. I would win that war probably 99 times out of 10. But besides that, basically the Cofagrius set up a lot of this thing has got hurt by a plus two shadow ball and then if it wasn't gonna hurt by plus two if i needed the willow i had the willow i was able to heal back with pain split and then lumberry so that if he did decide to status me he would have to do it twice and if he's running toxic for something that's not poison he would have to risk it missing but that's what we have for kifagrius here and then we have our thundy eye or i got a fever with a yashi berry with sludge wave hidden power ice thunderbolt and superpower with 84 in hp 220 or 252 in special attack and then 172 and hasty nature to get that 168 speed the same thing we had with um uh with infernape the same number of speed i'm still believing that is to be uh non-scarf garchomp and basically the thunders here i had t-wave on it but really t-wave didn't matter so we swapped t-wave for sludge wave just be able to just completely obliterate tapu bulu if it came in and we had it there specifically for Tapu Bulu. If, if we ever saw that, we quick sludge wave no matter what he has on the other side. We had him power ice to deal with uh, Tapu Bulu if he decides to uh, predict a sludge wave or for some or predict an electric move and go into Bulu. We, and we ended up clicking him power ice. We have that in case. And also for things like the Garchomp and Nidoking. Thunderbolt just as nice stab. And then Superpower was a little interesting move that I, I wanted to try to get around some of his bulkier walls. Um, especially defensive walls and such. I, let me look here real quick to see which um, specific mod I was thinking about. There was one in specific, or specifically, I think it was the Magnazone that it would allow me to get the superpower allowed me to hit Magnazone super effectively. Um, so I, he had that, he had the Ditto as well, but that didn't really matter with the superpower. Um, basically, Magnazone was, I was so f afraid of that Magnazone, I put superpower on Thunderous for that only. Instead of trying to miss a focus blast or some other stupid bullshit like that, just wanted to go for the solid, get for the superpower. Um, then we have our Komala, our Assault Vested Log, with Earthquake, Rapid Spin, Rock Slide, and Return, 244 in HP, 252 Adamant Attack, 
and then 12 in special defense. And this Komala ran the Calx, a plus two special attack Volcarona, which he does have on his team, cannot one-shot this Komala. Meanwhile, Rock Slide one-shots him. And it's, it takes hits better than a full specialty defensive leftovers Komala. And while I did, I do miss out on the Wish support, being able to tank any special move and then hit back so hard as Komala does with that 115 attack and then Adamant and everything on top of it, I figured why the hell not. It seems so so worthwhile to have that. I could pop an Earthquake on something like the Nidoking King and Tentacruel on the Magnazone. I could pop uh, Rock Slides on, the, on a Crobat and just really, really do well with him and return on literally anything else that doesn't resist it. And then Rapid Spin, just as nice little um, utility to get the to take a little pressure off of Exe Excadrill and put Rapid Spin on Kamala, hell of a Rapid Spinner. So that's what we decided to go with him. And then finally, we have Perfect 10, our Air Balloon Excadrill with Earthquake, Iron Head, Sl Stealth Rock, and Swords Dance, 28 HP, 252 on attack, and then 236 Jolly Speed, again hitting that 151 to outspeed Scarf Nidoking. And really my point is here is that if he's running Scarf Nido King, which seems really a, a good idea in my eyes to run, he would have to at some point click Sludge Wave. When he did, I would bring in Excadrill and then click Swords Dance on his switch out. And then whatever comes in next is going to be either two shot or one shot by an Earthquake from Excadrill. Uh, I was ready for anything he had. I had Stealth Rocks, just a last ditch effort if I was going to throw rocks out there. I had it in case we needed it. But let's get on into the battle. Okay, we can see that we're going here in the battle now. He's gonna start off and lead off with his Garchomp. Strange that the Garchomp doesn't have a nickname, but I guess when you're doing things like that, it happens. We have Latino Heat, the Nick guy, the Infernape, the nickname I forgot to really do. But right now, I'm not really liking this matchup. I've seen what Garchomp can do to Infernape before. I'm gonna you turn out. It seems like a really safe option. We get to see what he is. He is the rough skin, and then we get to see he also is Rocky Helmet. So to me, that says he's either a bulky lead or a, just a straight-up bulky Garchomp. So I'm like, okay, he was a quick Earthquake. I'm fine going to Thunderous. I scare him with the Empower Ice. I have no problems here. He's going to quick Stealth Rocks and set up the Rocks. This, to me, confirms that he's a bulky Garchomp. He has the lead Rocks, but he's more bulk than anything else. So he decides to withdraw the Garchomps just not to get killed by the uh, Hidden Power Ice. I went for just safely, even though I went into the Quefki, I quicked Hidden Power Ice anyway. I didn't want to risk over-predicting so early in a match. I, I feel like I played really safe this time in comparison to the last battle. He has the leftovers on the Quefki, so I'm like, okay, he's probably going to start doing spike setup or screens or some weird shit like that. So I just go into Log or Komala. I know I can hit him with an Earthquake. If he starts setting up spikes and stuff, I can just simply rapid spin him away and not worry about it. I got Macomatose. He can't, if he talk, he can't toxic me at all. Can't do anything like that. He decides to pull the double and go into Nido King. Now I'm sitting here like, okay, I have a Salt Vest. I know the Calx for a plus two Volcarona. I can quick Earthquake. He decides to switch out knowing I have Earthquake going back into the Garchomp. And I decide, you know what, fuck it. I'm just going to try to kill. I quick Earthquake and do a really decent amount for a Komala to a Garchomp with this Earthquake, and to me that definitely says that he's bulky, but it's like, that's not bad damage. He goes for the Rock Slide on me, so it's like, okay, he does have not Stone Edge, but Rock Slide, so he's not gonna wanna risk so many misses. I go for the Rapid Spin, get those rocks out of here, and make him have to waste a turn to set up rocks again. Get a crit. Crit doesn't really matter on the Garchomp, but you know, we do get that Rocky Element rough skin damage. It really, really hurts. And now I'm like, okay, Kamala's really down. I feel like he's maybe going to go for an Earthquake again, but I'm not too certain. So I go out into my uh, physical wall in Cofagrius. I know I can take a hit and threaten him out with a, willow, with a Willow or something. He misses his Rock Slide. So now he's feeling threatened. He decides to get the fuck on up out of there, going into Klefki. And here's where I made one, one of the first predictions, clicking Nasty Plot. The plan worked so far. We get a plus two Cofagrius on the field. We should be able to do decently to this Klefki, and there's really not much he can do to me. Play Rough ain't gonna do anything. Flash Cannon might have been his best bet, and Foul Play does absolutely dick from that thing. So he decides to Toxic me, and that's made me really, 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 really happy that I had a Lumberry, because even though I'm Toxic, I don't care this turn. I get my Lumberry off. I get rid of the poison. I'm feeling good. I go for Shadow Ball. I really wanna see what plus two can do to Klefki. And to me, it does over half, but to me that tells me maybe he's more physically um, defensive than special defensive. And I don't really right now want to risk a low roll here. So I decided, 
either way, I'm going to have to quick Shadow Ball, or have to go another turn after this one and get two turns of Toxic Damage. So I decided, let's go all out. Let's get another Nasty Point off. Let's get a little bit greedy. Now we're at plus four. I know Shadow Ball can kill a plus four. There is, to me, no reason in the world why Shadow Ball would not kill this Klefki at plus four and then do heavy, heavy damage to anything else coming in. I believe the only thing that could take the Shadow Ball at this point was a phys especially bulky Reuniquist. He decides to go for the foul play. Again, that's not going to do dick diddly to me. Like, and I get the mummy off to get rid of Prankster if that really mattered. But what we're really going to do here is go in quick Shadow Ball, and this Klefki is simply going to get felt up. He's going to get felt up all by Mr. McFeel here and get go down. Kefagrius gets one kill. Something you don't see every day is Kefagrius get, actually getting a kill offensively. But he decides to send out now the Grand Ball. Now I'm sitting here thinking... Okay, Play Rough can't do anything to me. I don't give a shit about the Intimidate. Earthquake and Crunch. Crunch is a little scary, but I'm just going to go for the uh, Shadow Ball anyway. But he maybe over predicts and goes for the Play Rough. I don't know if he was really trying to make a prediction of me going into uh, like Infernape or somebody else to take the Crunch. But I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to click Shadow Ball. Because if I connect on the Shadow Ball, you're dead, son. You're done. <laughs> so I just, he just goes down one shot. Two kills now for Kefirius. He's on a tear. And right now I'm feeling the toxic poison, or toxic damage right now. I don't think I can live another hit from anything, but I really don't want to swap out and really try to keep the Fagris around. There's really no reason right now. He got two kills, so I'm going to let him Earth Power. I was I quick Shadow Ball in case I got one 1% 1 or something, but I ended up going down. The Fagris got two kills, two massive, massive kills. I go right into Thunderous. This turn right here will convince me if he's Scarfed or not. I'm going to click the Hidden Power Ice. He's safe. He switches out. To me, he's Scarf. There's no reason in the world why he would switch out and not quick Sludge Wave or T-Bolt or Ice Beam. So I go for the Empower Ice. He brings in the Tentacruel. It's not going to do much. It's really not going to do much. Tentacruel has really nice natural special bulk. So you can compensate more on the physical side for it. He does have the Black Sludge. And now I'm just going to quick Thunderbolt. If he decided to pull a double back into Nitto King and really try to do it like that, I'd be like, okay, fine. I still have the Yachi, but he actually goes for the Sludge Bomb with the Tentacruel. I don't kill it with the Thunderbolt, but it does a hell of a lot of damage. And he gets a Poison. Kind of annoying. <laughs> I'll admit it was a little bit of annoying to get that Poison, because I don't know exactly how the game would have played out if I wouldn't have had this turn of Toxic Damage. And then I just decided, he decides to switch out, and I'm like, you know what, I think I'm just going to quick hit Power Eyes, predicting the Nitto King switch in. And this prediction really paid off. Got the Hidden Power Ice, did heavy, heavy, heavy damage to this Nidoking. King. And now even after this turn of Poison, I wondered if he didn't get the Poison with the Sludge Bomb, if I maybe could have lived a Sludge Wave from this Nidoking King without those two turns of Poison. If I could have, I would have gotten rid of this Nidoking King with another Hidden Power Ice. But Thunder Thunderous goes down. We still have a D-Swing in the bag because he quick Sludge Wave, he's Scarfed going out to Excadrill. Uh, this is all setting up now so that Excadrill can set up a Swords Dance and clean up the late game as much as he can. I have the Air Balloon. He has to switch out to something and then hit me to break my Air Balloon. He switches out back into Tentacruel. Meanwhile, I quick Swords Dance. And right now I'm thinking, okay, he could could have gone the offensive Tentacruel route and ran speed to outspeed me. Is he really going to do that with the Tentacruel to try to scold me? I'm just going to quick Earthquake. Nothing is hurting from this Earthquake quick. He stays in, I outspeed, I win this little matchup right here, and Tentacruel goes down to uh, goes down to Excadrill. Again, Excadrill's a plus two. We're max attack, not adamant, but max attack, and he brings in the Reuniquist, and this is where it got kind of a little dicey. I clicked Earthquake, and as you can see, Reuniquist didn't survive very long because it was a critical hit. We tried to run a little bit of calcs afterwards, and really that crit did matter. He did click Trick Room, and he would have been able to uh, try to get Focus Blast on me. We went through some scenarios, but anyway, the crit mattered. We got Garchomp in here. He goes for the Rock Slide, literally just to break the Air Balloon so that his Nidoking King can come in and clean me up here. I'm just going to quick Earthquake again because it still kills this Garchomp. Like, it's it's killing the Garchomp, and that's really nice to say that I was killing any, almost any Garchomp unless he was, like, max specially defensive, which I don't think he would have done that much damage earlier on Kamala if he was. He goes into the Nidoking. King. I know he's going to quick Earth Power, but I have nothing. I could have switched out into Tapu Lele and taken the Earth Power and then killed the Psychic to prefer Differential. I said, nah, I'm going to be safe. Differential to me at this point doesn't really matter, and I'm going to go into Tapu Lele now, get the free switch in, 
we set up the Psychic Surge, and really, it's right now just cooking Psychic. That's basically what Tapu Lele does, and his Nido King, sadly, will go down to uh, the Tapu Lele Psychic. We win by a 3-0 against Sketchy. It was, again, really good battle, really good. One crit kind of decided, basically, as we were talking through it, um, it kind of was like, if he wouldn't have crit, he would have set up Trick Room, and then he would have probably had a quick Focus Blast or something to, to at least break the Air Balloon, if not kill my um, Excadrill. I would have killed if I would if I would have lived. I would have killed with another Earthquake, and then it was it was a whole thing where steps needed to go perfectly for him to pull it out with the Trick Room set. But there was a way that with Komala, Infernape, and Tapu Lele in my back, I could have made a little bit of advantage with, with Trick Room with Komala or stalled it out so that Tapu Lele could have came and finished up like she did. But that's neither here nor there. It's a good battle all around. 3-0 victory for us. We are 1-1 one one finally. And, man, I'm looking forward to the next week. And I know this is a little bit late, but thank you guys for coming out. If you guys enjoyed, go ahead and check out the videos coming up at the end of the, at the end, of the end cards section. And click subscribe if you have not already. But, anyway, I'm going to get up on out here. I'm Carson. This is Toxic Gaming. And as always, you guys stay toxic. We'll see you guys.